Well, good evening and welcome to Tucker Carlson tonight. The downfall of Hollywood producer Harvey Weinstein essentially complete tonight. The allegations are far too numerous to ignore. He's been fired from his own company. Now he's apparently in some kind of rehab facility talking about himself. Well, the NYPD investigates criminal charges against him. Whatever happens next, you pretty much know what Harvey Weinstein's Wikipedia entry is going to say 20 years from now. But the larger Weinstein saga is just beginning. Many powerful people knew what Harvey Weinstein was doing and not only ignored his crimes, but actively took his side against his many victims. It's a long list, but at the very top of that list is NBC News. NBC had this story months ago. Their former anchor Ronan Farrow conclusively exposed more than a dozen allegations against Weinstein by women who say he sexually harassed, groped, even raped them. But the network killed that investigation. Now, NBC News president Noah Oppenheim says the company had good reason for doing that. But did the company have good reason? Trace Gallagher has taken a very close look at this question, and he joins us tonight with an answer. Trace? Tucker, NBC News has gone on the record saying the reason it decided not to run the Ronan Farrow story on Harvey Weinstein is because he didn't have enough reporting to go on the air. Well, now a number of outlets, including the Daily Beast and Huffington Post, are refuting that, saying that Farrow began reporting on the Harvey Weinstein story back in January. And by July, he had interviewed at least eight Weinstein accusers and had also secured the coveted New York police audio tape of Weinstein admitting he groped a 20 two-year-old Italian model. Listen. Why did you say you touched my wrist? Oh, please, I'm sorry. Just come on. I'm used to that. Come on. Are you please. used to that? Yes, come in. Then in August, a woman who accused Weinstein of raping her agreed to an on-camera interview as long as she was in silhouette and not identified. The Huffington Post says not only did NBC News refuse to provide a camera crew for the interview, it tried to stop the interview altogether and tried to stop Farrow from reporting on the story altogether. So Farrow paid for the camera crew himself. NBC says the opposite, quoting, Ronan very understandably wanted to keep forging ahead, so we didn't want to stand in his way, and he took it to the New Yorker and did a ton more extraordinary work. But a dozen people inside and outside NBC reportedly claim NBC slow-walked the story and ran it up the corporate chain, not just news president Andy Lack, but all the way up to NBC Universal CEO Steve Burke, something news employees called unprecedented. In fact, some told the Huff Post that Weinstein's attorneys trying to kill the story and NBC News appeared to be synonymous. And it should be noted that last week when the New York Times first broke the story, both CBS and ABC ran it during their evening newscasts. NBC did not, saying Weinstein was not a nationally recognized figure. The same excuse was used for pulling a Weinstein skit from Saturday Night Live. Tucker. Thanks, Trace. So let's be clear. NBC is lying. Yesterday, News Division head Noah Oppenheim claimed NBC, quote, encouraged Farrow to report that story. The opposite is true. They pressured him to drop it. Oppenheim says, quote, NBC gave him resources to report that story over many, many months. Maybe, except for a camera crew when Farrow tried to interview an alleged rape victim. Oppenheim says Farrow's stories, quote, was not the story that we were looking at when we made our judgment. Yet another lie. As Farrow told Rachel Maddow two nights ago, he'd finished the bulk of his reporting on Weinstein when he went to The New Yorker. That's why the magazine accepted his piece in the first place. Why did you end up reporting this story for The New Yorker and not for NBC News? Look, you would have to ask NBC and NBC executives about the details of that story. I'm not going to comment on any news organization's story that they, um, you know, did or didn't run. NBC says that, you know, you didn't, that th the story wasn't publishable, that it wasn't ready to go by the time that you brought it to them. But obviously it's ready to go by the time you got it into The New Yorker. Uh, I walked into the door at The New Yorker with a, uh, an explosively reportable piece that should have been public earlier, and uh, immediately, obviously, The New Yorker recognized that, and it is not accurate to say that it was not reportable. In fact, there were multiple determinations that it was reportable at NBC. We bet money that her employer didn't want Rachel Maddow to do that segment, but she did it anyway. Good for her. So why did a purported news organization kill a blockbuster news story? Well, presumably, we will find out at some point this is a scandal and the truth has a way of emerging from those in the end. One possible explanation is Noah Oppenheim. 
In addition to being the head of NBC News, Oppenheim is a Hollywood screenwriter with deep ties to the movie business and to the Democratic Party establishment. Could it be that Oppenheim had a business relationship with Harvey Weinstein or Weinstein's company? It's not a far-fetched possibility at all. And yet, as of earlier today, Oppenheim and NBC, when asked directly, refused to say. No, Oppenheim ought to resign immediately. And if he doesn't, he ought to be fired immediately by NBC's parent company, Comcast. News executives are not allowed to tell lies. They're not allowed to participate in cover-ups. They ought to answer straightforward questions straightforwardly. When they don't, you know they're corrupt. And that's exactly what NBC News is. For more on the broader media efforts to protect Harvey Weinstein in the middle of all this, we're joined by Joe Concha, who covers that industry for The Hill newspaper. Joe, thanks for coming on tonight. Sure. So the red flag for me, and these are very complicated stories and we don't know all the answers, but we do know that NBC News, Noah Oppenheim and Noah Oppenheim's, Oppenheim's agent are refusing to answer a very simple question, which is, did Noah Oppenheim, as president of NBC News, have any business relationship at all with Harvey Weinstein or his company? And they won't answer that question. What is the possible range of explanations for refusing to answer a simple question like that? That's what bothers me about this, Tucker, that the head of a news organization is refusing to answer questions. He should go to, not to NBC News, obviously, don't keep it in-house, but find some other publication, somebody you don't compete with, sit down and answer questions. It, it's exactly right. what he would ask the journalists of NBC News to do. And you could break this down a hundred different ways. Two things that really stick out at me, and Trace brought it up uh, in his piece. Seven and a half hours after this story broke on Thursday, the NBC Nightly News, which is watched by eight million people, did not cover it. So that's the news side. The entertainment side of NBC, you have Seth Meyers and Jimmy Fallon didn't do any jokes on Harvey Weinstein for five nights. Then you have Saturday Night Live, as Trace mentioned, there were jokes on Weinstein, and then suddenly they didn't appear on air. So you either believe that those four entities decided that it wasn't a story or an order, the code red, so to speak, came down from somewhere and said, we're not going to touch this until they absolutely had to because it was blown wide open. That's point number one. Two, we talked about this many months ago, the Access Hollywood tape, NBC property, Access Hollywood. Right. And it just happened that this tape walked out the door that they knew about for months, maybe longer, by the way, the contents of it, and ended up in a Washington Post reporter's mailbox two nights before the second presidential debate. By all intents and purposes, that should have ended the election, except the candidate was Trump and he was foolproof to this sort of stuff, and obviously he won. So you look at those two simple explanations, right, or those two scenarios. Then compare it, Tucker, to what we saw this week from NBC News, and particularly yesterday, where they had a bombshell report, an exclusive, that said the president wanted to include or, or increase, excuse me, our nuclear arsenal tenfold. And they have that in quotes, right? And then Trump, President Trump disputes that. But more importantly, Secretary Mattis, who's one of the most credible people in Washington, or at least respected, says it's absolutely false. What was that story based on? Unnamed sources. We don't know where those sources came from. It could very easily be somebody's father's, brother's, nephew's, cousin's, former roommate. We don't know. That was good enough to get the air. But Ronan Farrow, who had tapes, who had videotapes with actual right. accusers, Eight that's not good enough for us. We don't want to get in your way. We don't want to get in your way. Go take it to the New Yorker. So unpack all of that and then ask yourself, who do you believe? It's remarkable. I don't think in my life I've ever taken the side of a politician over a news organization. And it pains me to do it, but I don't think they're legitimate. I think they're corrupt. I think they're liars. I think they're debasing their own currency. But they're not the only media organization to be sucked into this. And again, there's a lot we don't know, and I don't want to cast aspersions when not warranted. But Amazon, Jeff Bezos, seems to have been sucked into this story by Rose McGowan. Do you understand what, what the allegation is? Yeah, I, I read that on the way over here uh, in, in the Daily Mail. And it, basically, you have a whole bunch of tweets from Rose McGowan, who was a big actress in the 90s, uh, accusing of uh, accusing Bezos, uh, the Amazon owner, and also, by the way, the owner of the Washington Post, of killing uh, a series that she wanted to get on the, on the air and said also that she was raped as well. To be honest with you, I, I read it on the way over here. I don't quite have all the details. You read a couple of tweets, and it's hard to kind of piece together. But now what you're seeing here, Tucker, is this story has definitive legs. It's almost now, it is a week old, and it's going to keep going and going because more journalists like the Huffington Post, like the Daily Beast, like even CNN is going to dig into this, and more journalists are going to be exposed for protecting Weinstein. That's and then right. even news organizations, it's going to just 
just I think NBC was betting on, well, it's the era of Trump and this thing's going to blow over because the news cycle moves so fast and it's not going away. People aren't going to let this go. And some people at some very high places, I have a feeling, are going to be exposed in this far more than Harvey Weinstein. Yeah, I mean, Weinstein's self-evidently a pig. The revealing part was watching the entire ruling class mobilize behind him to defend him and the indefensible, really interesting moment. Joe, thank you. Thank you.